This document was recovered from the site blank precious document vault. Anomalous object number, AO1504 WGGYXJK. Item description, an unremarkable man who is not able to be harmed. Date of recovery, blank blank blank. Location of recovery, blank blank. Current status, crossed out, AO1504 is held in a standard humanoid containment cell, not crossed out, missing. Addendum 1504-1. Interviewed, AO1504. Interviewer, Dr. Lloyd. Forward, AO1504 is being questioned on its background. Begin log. What is your name? I don't remember. Joe, something. Okay. Now, what year were you born? 1982. Thank you for the year, but do you have an exact date? No, I never knew when I was born. Dr. Lloyd's nose begins to bleed. Oh. Excuse me. My nose is bleeding. Dr. Lloyd left the room and returned a few minutes later. I'm sorry, that was weird. I've never been prone to random nosebleeds. It's fine. Maybe a storm is coming. I've heard the changing air pressure can make a person's nose bleed. Maybe. Do you know why you can't be hurt? The subject was silent for a few seconds then proceeded to weep. I don't really want to talk about it. That's fine. Thank you for your cooperation with today's interview. You may return to your room. End log. Addendum 1504-2. We didn't know his true anomaly. We didn't know what he could really do. Data corrupt. Data corrupt. I guess he affects computers too. Our automatic security system began to have hiccups. A breach here, a breach there. But nothing that surprised us. But then, our keeter got out. Only about half of the staff here realized it. The other half? All died. We managed to contain it. We sent a request for more staff, but they never responded. Our supplies were dwindling, so we asked for more. Nothing. They didn't even acknowledge our existence. We had more breaches, more deaths, yet we never questioned these breaches or these deaths. I don't know why we didn't question those deaths. Data corrupt. Earlier today, we had a site-wide containment breach. All the doors opened because of those hiccups I mentioned earlier. Most of the remaining staff members are dead. Those who are still alive are few and far between. We can't contain a breach of this magnitude. And the other foundation sites will probably ignore it. They'll cite it as completely normal and ignore it. I'm going to put this in the vault, then set off the on-site nuke. I'm already badly hurt, and the blast would save more lives than it will end. If anyone ever finds this, tell my wife that I love her and that I'm sorry for spending so much time in my job. Tell her that I said goodbye and that I am thinking of her as I die. Researcher Daryl Lloyd. Note, this was handwritten on the document, presumably before it was put in the precious document vault. There are blood stains on the document. Later analysis proved this to be Dr. Lloyd's blood. Parts of this document are unreadable due to smearing. Addendum 1504-3. The site blank nuclear warhead was detonated on blank slash blank slash blank to counteract a class 7 containment breach. A total of blank anomalies were destroyed in the blast, blank anomalies were recovered, and blank anomalies are missing, including AO1504. Blank foundation personnel died in site blank. This document has been updated per the new information recovered from site blank. Item number, SCP-1504. Object class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-1504 is not currently contained. If any Foundation personnel see the subject, they are to contact the current project head. In the event SCP-1504 is found, it is to be brought to Area 114, Area 114 is the primary location for dealing with perception and sensory-based threats or entities, and contained in a 3x3x3 meter containment chamber. To enter the subject's containment chamber, a total of four level three staff members are needed. Two staff members must remain inside the control room to remotely enact the failsafe should a containment breach occur. The failsafe consists of flooding the containment chamber and surrounding areas with halothane vapor, which has proven to be the only viable method to incapacitate SCP-1504. Extensive research has shown that SCP-1504 can be incapacitated by blunt force trauma to the head. The subject is to be kept fully confined and incapacitated at all times through the use of restraints and halothane vapor. The other staff members must release multiple locks simultaneously. 
a minimum of four guards are to be protecting them at this time. After all locks are released, one staff member may enter the containment chamber. The guards must be ready for a containment breach at all times the containment chamber is open. No automatic systems may be used in Area 114. All doors and containers must be locked using simple combination locks or simple padlocks. All personnel working at Area 114 must have a high aptitude for parapsychology or a strong resilience to perception shifts. Description, SCP-1504 is a Caucasian male, standing at 1.95 meters tall. The subject's appearance is unremarkable, aside from a small birthmark on its right shoulder. SCP-1504's anomalous traits include its inability to be harmed or killed. All actions carried out by SCP-1504 will be perceived by surrounding individuals as being within expectations for the situation. SCP-1504 has been known to attack personnel who will then believe circumstance or their own doing has hurt them. The subject is able to affect electronic and automatic systems. SCP-1504 was brought to the attention of the Foundation because of its inability to be harmed and was classified as an anomalous object after initial testing. The subject was held at site blank in the anomalous object wing of the facility. On blank slash blank slash blank, a site-wide security failure and subsequent containment breach resulted in the on-site nuclear warhead being detonated. SCP-1504 was declared missing after a search of the site did not reveal a confirmed death. A low-priority search was issued, but was soon raised to high priority after the above document was found. MTFETA-6, aka Awareness Filters, was formed to find SCP-1504. Addendum 1504-1, after being further analyzed and sent through multiple filters, it was discovered that SCP-1504's responses were different from what was previously recorded. The document has been updated to include these responses. Interviewed, SCP-1504. Interviewer, Dr. Lloyd. Forward, SCP-1504 is being questioned on its background. Begin log. What is your name? I'm not going to tell you. You'll just ignore me. Okay. Now, what year were you born? Told you. You wouldn't even notice if I punched you in the nose. Thank you for the year, but do you have an exact date? I didn't give you a fucking year. Hey. Hey. Doc, watch this. SCP-1504 got up from its seat and proceeded to physically assault Dr. Lloyd. The subject then returned to its seat. Oh, excuse me. My nose is bleeding. Dr. Lloyd left the room and returned a few minutes later. I'm sorry, that was weird. I've never been prone to random nosebleeds. It's because I fucking punched you. Maybe, do you know why you can't be hurt? I could say anything. I could do anything. I could say that I'm going to rape and kill your wife and you wouldn't even notice. Hell, I could actually rape and kill your wife and you wouldn't notice. I'm living in a virtual hell because I can't die. I am going to step outside this room and take the guard's gun. I'm going to shoot myself with that gun and nothing, fucking nothing, is going to happen. The subject appears to be in tears at this point. Do you know what it feels like to be in a room crowded with people and they all ignore you? Do you know how hellish my life is? I want to die. That's fine. Thank you for your cooperation with today's interview. You may return to your room. End log.